that take a lot of uh, focus, man. <laughs> you know, they got to be in the matrix doing all that. Shit. I mean, yeah, uh, so operating outside of it and then deciding when to jump in, pretty much. All right, so this is pretty much how it's gonna look right there. Uh, this all right, gonna, man. yeah, y'all, it's gonna be mainly just torso, and you can barely yeah. see the mic. But like, I, I tried to place it where your shit could like flat won't be looking like mm -hmm. viewer won't even notice. No, that's cool. Mm -hmm. I just be, you know, innovative minds. We'd be like, how can we yeah, just put the make mic this whole discipline? Show ourselves, you know, for those who don't know, you know. You wanna go first? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, sir. You Are we rolling? Yeah, we rolling. Oh, okay, oh, bet, bet, bet. All right, I ain't know if we, we gotta get right. Here yeah. we go. Uh, what's going on, man? My name is Joseph. Uh, I'm from the south side of Arlington, Texas, and I represent the home team. Yeah, man, my name is Jones, RJ. Uh, shoot, I'm from Grand Prairie, I suppose. I went to Cedar Hill. My family from Louisiana, so I was raised in between both. Uh, did a lot of traveling, so I just feel like Earth raised me overall, you know what I mean? Uh, fashion, music, tech, literature. Uh, events, those are the things that I do, man. Yeah, home team, all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how did all this come about? Like, where did the name home team come from? Hmm. Yeah, so that's, uh, so home team started when, like, I moved back from Missouri. I had been living there for seven years. Uh, like I said, I'm from the south side of Arlington, Texas. And so when I finally moved back, um, after building up a little buzz up in Missouri, um, doing shows, building it from the ground up, um, when I got back, like I kind of just sat dormant for like two two months or so. I didn't do anything. People was inviting me to come perform, do stuff. I didn't do anything. I just wanted to study the scene because I hadn't been here. And so, uh, man, I was just doing my homework. And the one thing I noticed was like, yo, why haven't we? And the common question that everybody kept saying is like, yo, why Dallas don't got a whatever? Why Dallas don't got a, a movement? Why we ain't had a like a mainstay thing musically? And I just, you know, was doing my homework and I noticed, I'm like, oh, it's because we haven't had a movement that the people can attach themselves to. Like, outside of like the boogie movement, but everybody don't yeah, boogie, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Everybody don't do that, like, if we being real. You know what I'm saying? That's like, that's a that's a niche type of thing um, in the scope of how big the Metroplex is. And so I was like, well, what could that thing be? How could that thing be represented? And so I, I was doing my homework and I'm like, man, okay, what about a hat? Like why why don't we wear our hat here like everybody wear everybody else's city's hat mm -hmm. except ours and so the first thing i did was i started wearing the rangers hat right and all the while i had already got the name for whatever reason the word home team just kept coming to me and so i started just putting different things together I was like, okay i'm gonna only wear a rangers hat like i got this hat on right now but you see the you know you see the home team pin up there but uh and my son made this hat so that's why i'm wearing it yeah but um <laughs> uh and so you know we just i just started putting that together it was like, okay home team we're gonna flip the logo to where it looks like the ranger logo to create brand like that brand recognition to where if you see a rangers hat you think of us you don't think of the rangers you think of home team records um, just like when you see a New York Yankees hat, you don't think of Barry Jeter first, you think of Jay-Z. When you see a Raiders hat, you don't think of the Raiders, you think of NWA, mm -hmm. you know? And so that was what I was trying to, you know, create with that. And then, uh, you know, it's just been a process of actually like building out the label side of it. You know, it was just something we were screaming and then people started screaming it with us. And then, uh, like, I met this joker. Yeah, yeah, A yeah. couple different instances on accident. Facts. How did y'all link up, man? Because, like, the chemistry is there. Absolutely. Uh, I guess, like, truthfully, like, he was saying he was dormant for a minute, but then he popped out and did a show with one of my good partners, which was uh, Ricky Blue. Mm -hmm. Shout out, bro. And uh, Ricky did the, the rent. What is it? Um, I rent something. It was the rent. Rent Money mm. uh, Showcase. And I went, you know what I'm saying, showing love as always, and then I seen Joseph up there. And I was like, oh man, this this dude hard. Like, who is this? That's interesting. You know what I'm saying? Just make a note. That's kind of what I do, right? Put it in the files and then just went on about my life. Ended up linking up with a homie, uh, JT. Shout out JT. And ended up being over there at his spot. 
and Joseph was there. So, and... Um, no, you were there, and I walked in. Oh, is that what it was? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I was there, and then Joseph was there. Like, bro, I and was I was there. like, damn, he, he got broke in. And I got to tell him, like, hey, bro, you was, you was smoking it up on the stage, you know what I'm saying? Like, I respect the craft. Like, you really hard. You know, we got to talk a little bit during that time, get to know each other. Then um, went to DreamCon. And which is a convention that uh, I know the individuals that founded that, and they they did DreamCon, and he was there too. So it was just like we just kept running into each other, running into each other. Eventually, ended up having a conversation and did a whole tape together on well, some. Just, you skipped something. What I skipped? Skip, what something. I skipped? You skipped when, where we were at when, before that. It was a. Uh, we were at, what was the fashion oh, show? Raw oh, Elements fashion show. Yeah, it was, yeah. yeah and we, yeah, we yeah. met there, and we just all happened to be in all black. Facts. And we like, you know, it's fashion show, so you got, you got it on. You put, you know. And so uh, everybody just like started associating us with each other at the event. It was like we just looked like we was like a group like or something. Wearing the leather jacket. Yeah, type. type. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, like the uh, photographer. No, 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 no. So that's that's this. Yeah. This is okay. 2019. This is 2019. Oh, this is 2019. So yeah, yeah, this no, is this, yeah. This, this is just like being at the fashion show. Took a picture. Everybody was like, ah, oh, the blase, blase, and then. Like, it's like, shit, we just hung out for that whole night. End up going to Arlington, yeah. just kicking it, yeah. and, and it was like, shoot. It was the energy. We need to uh, yeah. move on this energy. So then we ended up having a recording session, invited some producers. Each It was three of us, right? Each person pretty much pro, uh, asked a producer to come out, and we just created for, like, that whole hours. day yeah. and uh, made three songs and then just put out a tape. What, what's y'all like, uh, studio process like? Because that's crazy. I've what? never heard of nobody just linking up and doing a tape. That's like some currency type stuff. Like, yeah, No, that was literally what it was. It was like, yeah. we just, yeah. we was vibing so crazy and people, the energy behind us and the way people reacted to seeing us, we was like, okay, we need to bottle this up and do something. Mm -hmm. And so we did. And, uh, you know, it was a Flashy Boys tape. And that's what mm -hmm. we called it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we had, we had put that out. And that was like towards the end of 2020. Thanks. And so we just kept rocking. We just kept rocking, kept rocking. Mm -hmm. 2020 hit and everything kind of went dormant. I was like, that was the end of 2019, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, that was, then that was 2020 it. happened. Yeah. We was getting ready to gear it up full heavy. I had did a fashion show. I produced my 10th fashion oh, show. That's right, that's in, uh, right. In February of 2020, it was like it was a, a great show. It was like 400 people came out. We had a great time. I showcased a new collection and everything. And then a month later, COVID hit and everything shut down. So it was crazy. Everything got digital. I seen you had like a creative, like. NFTs. Facts, facts, facts. Mm -hmm. Like, what gave you, that gave you that creative process? Um, shoot, man, really just connecting with different individuals. I was, I'm into tech, so I was already kind of paying attention to what was going on with the, um, with the non-fungible tokens and things of that nature and being able to be like, all right, I want to be able to use these for events. I want to be able to use these for my clothes. I want to uh, integrate tech and clothes and make, make, tech wearable essentially you know what I'm saying so that's just like some of the first steps to that and knowing they about to be sending everybody to the metaverse you know what I mean so already getting some property and some some space within that intellectually to be like all right we need to be able to maneuver and know what's going on here so that was just like a, a minor step into that direction of what we really gonna provide you know what I'm saying but uh, to have that shirt spinning around 3d like when it's time to start putting those oculus on and stuff like that people could really see the fabric and really see the quality of the shirt and just kind of already getting into that space and normally when there's a, a boom in the tech industry we're some of the last people to just be on the on the coattail of that boom and who, that's who when you say i mean that's black it's, people are like fashion nah he said Bo we us <laughs> okay no, yeah, I, was just, so, I was just asking i just wanted to clarify yeah you wanted yeah. to clarify nah we, we as, as a people we be very, very much so on the super tail end of that, which okay. makes us, uh, it's a huge gap between Absolutely. us and everybody else. So Absolutely. in order to close that gap, we kind of got to dive in there a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. So um, this playing that was to at least spark something to other people, you know what I'm saying? To, to spark something with them, myself and the homies, like my homie in Taiwan, mm -hmm. um, that, that helped me put that together. You know what I mean? Shout out to him, um, but yeah, that's what that was, man. Just something slight for what we really 
aiming for, but we really shooting at, you know, the real target. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to uh, actually dive more into the brand, into y'all's line. Mm -hmm. What do y'all got coming up in the future? Hmm. So right now we in the midst of, uh, you are now watching the movement. <laughs> if you yeah. notice, we keep saying that with everything. And uh, like I said, man, this home team as a, as a, uh, as an infrastructure, as a label has been laying dormant. You know, I had a really like productive 2020, right? So 2020 um, was a foundational year for what we're doing now, meaning like I got to work on myself, right? I was dealing with a lot. Like uh, one of the big thing I, I did was like, I restored my marriage with my wife. Like we were split and uh, we end up, you know, by the grace of God, we was able to get back together and, uh, and, and work through all of that and, uh, you know, get remarried. Um, not many people Thanks. can say they got a divorce yeah. and then got remarried to the same person. And so we was able to do that. And, uh, you know, that was huge for me. And I made two, I made, I actually made three albums that year. One is coming out this year, which we'll double back and do another interview for that one. Mm -hmm. But, um, <laughs> Hello. you know, and I released two projects, Pray for the Homies and then Focus Your Aim. Uh, Focus Your Aim, Empty the Clip. And when I released that one, the latter one, Focus Your Aim, Empty the Clip, towards the end of the year, it kind of put a shift in for, for everybody that was like around me mm -hmm. because this was the first time I talked about everything I was working through in 2020 and how I overcame it. And so, you know, it kind of put a bat, it felt like it put a battery in the back of like everybody around me. And so we all was working on ourselves together, right? And so we really spent 2021 um, doing that, building a foundation, making sure everybody was right internally, um, figuring out where we wanted to go. And then when this year came, um, it was like, you know what? I think it's time to like activate it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And we got around, you know, some more people came into the squad, um, not even because of because of uh, the music or, or the potential of what they saw this thing could be, but because, um, you know, you attract, you don't attract what you want, you attract who you are, mm -hmm. but because of the people we were becoming. You know what I'm saying? Like the type of men we were becoming and what we were trying to do just in ourselves and our everyday lives and how we were putting that out. And uh, and so, you know, we were finally able to get like the team that we needed around. And so it's like, okay, it's it's time to like really roll this thing out as as not just something we saying, but like, no, this is a label and this is a movement. Like mm -hmm. you are now witnessing a movement. Like whether you act like you see it or not, whether you, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's happening. So yeah, yeah that's but, how. And I yeah. guess like from, from, cause that's him really being inside the nucleus, right? And I guess from the outsource before becoming a part of that nucleus, just, really just seeing somebody that's serious about that craft. Like you said, that's that's essentially, that's the battery. Somebody that's, it's refreshing to see somebody that's like, uh, that has integrity, that has uh, principles and things of that nature as they're maneuvering through this industry or this society even. You know what I mean? Like, okay, I can get with that. I already, before knowing more about your story, I already knew um, what I seen when it came to your talent and what you were, the work you were put in on the stage with your with your band with your crew, then learning more about okay this is a, a real individual that that has a true story. Anytime I see stuff like that, I want to help that person shine their light. You know what I mean? As as hard as they can, that's what I'm here for. Um, so huh, let me interject right there because you just said something crazy, um, and so. All the while, like I'm dropping this stuff, doing all this stuff, shooting videos, we doing all of this stuff. RJ is there just supporting. He ain't asking like, yo, bro, like, you know, can I, like whatever, he like literally none of that, he not pressing the issue on any of that. Bro's literally like just supporting me, being a bro, like, and we just tapping in with each other, like being real friends. So like, I'm talking about just the most authentic support you could think of, bro. So much so, that when I started coaching my son's baseball team, this joker volunteered to come help help me coach. I'm a basketball player. My son wanna play baseball. I don't know much about baseball. He was like, bro, I'll come help. Mm -hmm. And he literally committed his time to coaching like 12, 13, 12, 13 year old boys mm -hmm. with me um, just as support. You know, like just being like a supportive friend. You know what I'm saying? Just being a friend. And the kids remember that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Not That's like engraved in their heads forever. I'm absolutely. like, man, you know, that's the kind of stuff that I, I want to do and to make an impact anyway. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, if the Most High gave you, 
gifts, you have to share them. That's that's what, what we say. No. Otherwise, it's being put in vain, huh? Yeah, you yeah. Put your talent to work, and your life uh, is in vain. Indeed. So, um, when it came down to that, I played baseball since like I played t-ball when I was like three and stuff. Then when I really from seven years old to the in the high school, I was playing like serious baseball. You know what I mean? Like traveling, World Series, all of that. So I was like, shit. I got this just sitting dormant. I might as well do something with it. And I always wanted to uh, be like a mentor or something like that. And it, it was just cool because it got to help sharpen my leadership skills, my, my being vocal, seeing how uh, what you have to give, how it can really change an individual and, and what they have going on up here, which then increases their confidence, the way they walk and the way they talking to their teammates, the way they uh, carrying themselves at school now, the way they actually able to intertwine and connect with other people you know what I'm saying it, it's way deeper than just baseball you know you really get to get in there into their psyche and help them become the men that they need to be um, and things of that nature and it, it's just beautiful but I was very blessed to be able to do that but um, but yeah being outside of the nucleus being there supporting just wanted to see bro light shine wanted to see him get to where he was going that was the whole thing of why I would show up and, and be there it's just cause when I see good people bro I wanna I wanna help them you know what I mean? That's that's a, a gift of mine. And then I have resources and things that I could tie in and at least bring it to the table. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, you know, seeing that and just being there eventually and gradually, I ended up becoming a part of that nucleus as well of like, um, like, bro. Like you be around and stuff, but you ain't never said that you did this, 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 and this. Like, let what can I do for you? And I'm like, I don't know, but if you want to be around, that's cool too, bro. This is what I got going on. I'm working on this collection or this show or this and this. And then, bro, in return, started helping me. Uh, and if anything I needed, he just there. You know what I mean? So uh, that kind of created the bond to get deeper and better. And just over time, it was like shit. I'm like, hey, bro. Um, I feel like I'm I'm a part of the crew. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Cause I was just like I just so you I was so used to just having bro around. It's like duh. Yeah. But he was like, no, nah, I feel like we need to like really officially say like I'm home to you. Yeah, like, like I'm like some, I thought you was, but okay. Yeah, like, match, bro. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Man, cause I'm like really like on some I started feeling that it was about to get more a little bit more serious. Yeah. Uh then maybe even he recognized at the time of like knowing it's about to be time, but I'm like, nah, it need, it's time to start putting that structure on it now. Yeah. Like, if we're going to be moving and doing this, put some structure, let's put even more structure. Because mm -hmm. I know it's already in your mental, in your temple, but like, just kind of pressing that button, like, nah, like, it is, but yeah. tighten it up, because what we about to go for real is going to be a little bit different. We're going to have to have a, a clean ship. That yeah. ship got to be moving a certain type of way, you know, see who's there for real, see who's not there for real. When you start putting a little bit more structure to it and, and heavyweight fall off the lightweight keep the boat floating and we and we get to rock out so it was just kind of you know being on that tip and um and since then like bro got into his document start start putting stuff together you know we've been rocking and rolling it's been a beautiful process to just watch and be a part of even and uh it became something special it's, it really is a home team like it's really home like you know family. what i'm saying like family uh, more so than just the music and everything else that's going on this it's it became other people that's like i seen your i seen your light i want to help you shine that joint and it's like nah bro i appreciate that but i see your light too i'm gonna help you shine that joint and and i'm actually walking this way are you walking this way they're like yeah i'm walking this way too yeah, it's like bet let's go together you know even that being um shoot even being at like social dallas and stuff like that me and bro would be at social dallas uh going to service and checking in and doing that like like, that happened too on some natural just we in here getting getting the word you know what mm -hmm. i mean so um them them shoot we leaving out whole gaps and stuff like we have uh the light crew which is uh bro put together a whole crew of individuals to where we having bible study mm -hmm. and and uplifting as men you know what i mean um being able to have a place to speak and talk and, and to pray for one another and things of that nature so just that all of that is what i'm about so um you feel like we don't do enough it's like you know black men for mental health Oh, you know okay. I mean? yeah. yeah. So we just talked about this in our, in our meeting. Um, so um, this is something I'm super, super passionate about. 
because see we 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 think that when we see men specifically black men young black men when we crash out we think it's just a oh this is just how it go you know what do you say uh what, what do you say niggas die every day b it's mm -hmm. no restart on this no nah, but you gotta to explain to yeah me. you gotta understand like why are we crashing out though yeah. why are we even willing to cr be like to to go to whatever level to go why are we willing to take penitentiary chances why are we willing to do this and so i, I just within myself i start like understanding like yo bro we just it's just certain stuff we just not dealing with mm -hmm. uh, within ourselves and so, you know, like I said, I'm just, I'm super passionate about it. And my whole thing is, cause this is Men's Mental uh, Health Awareness Month. And uh, three out of every four suicides are men. So it's not a little teenage white girl that we love to put on TV about it. Yeah. No, it's, pe it's specifically men that look like us, black men, right? Why? Because of what we gotta face every day we go, we walk out the door. It's like we, if if it's not our environment, we in the trenches, we got ops, we got whatever, this and that, is we struggling to try to provide. We like we doing the best we can and it still ain't enough. Inflation rising, but your wage is not rising. Like, you know what I'm saying? And it's like what what do you do? What do you do? Like, do I go back? Cause I could go this route and get this quick money and take these penitentiary chances or I could do this. And so it's like, that's a lot, bro. That's a lot. That's like a lot to carry. Yeah. And you know, as men, um, we we take pride in being able to do for our people, for the people who count on us. And when we're not able to do that Man. to the fullest of our capabilities that we feel, we come down hard on ourselves. Let alone like. Man, I, you know, whoa, whoa, if you got like a woman who isn't understanding of that, you know, who you, you dealing with and she just on you heavy. Like that's a whole nother thing right there. And so that's it's a, a lot. That's terrible. It's terrible. It's a lot. And, and we don't talk about it. You know what I'm saying? We don't, we don't have conversations. And so, you know, when bro, that's actually the first time I've ever talked about the light well, has ever been brought up. Cause mm -hmm. I, you know, but like, that was the, the reason light, why I created. Is that like, uh, is that like still the entity of home team? Yeah, it's, it's like a, just making it like this is our place to talk. This is our a hundred percent. So so how that started was like just me. I'm like having conversations with bros. Like he calling me, other homies calling me. We talking, we working through things. I'm like, you know what? Let me just bring them because that's really one of my gifts is like being able to like bring people together. Mm -hmm. Like, and so I'm like, you know what? Let me bring everybody in a space. So we meet on, you know, on Zoom, 7 a.m. And uh, we would just talk. It'd just be a safe space. Get out what you need to get out, bro. Like, say what you need to say. Like, yeah, yeah we're going to pray. Yeah, we're going to talk about God. Yeah, we're going to do that. But say what you need to say how you need to say it. Right? Sometimes we feel like we got to dress stuff up. Like an like, outlet. Yeah. Like a raw outlet. Absolutely. Too. Don't think. You ain't got to think too much before saying what you need to say. Just, just say it in this space. Because, yeah. like, you know, like he was saying, it's, it's a... Um, minimal spaces at times for people mm -hmm. um, to have to just be free especially us you know what I mean like you you kind of have to keep things close to the chest because people's perspective switch or change or whatever and then now you're weak or now you because you're vulnerable now you're more open in a space where you can get hurt it's a lot of different things and it's weird because we are built and, and put on this place of like where well, we have to be the man of steel mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like and um and that's fine and dandy but even the man of steel had lewis mm -hmm. yeah L Lewis, or whatever her no, name is lewis hey, L lewis 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 yeah lewis she was yeah lewis how you say her name <laughs> lewis had lewis and these are the time lane <laughs> And this time of day, it, it might, might be, be Lewis. Lewis. It could be <laughs> Lewis. I'm trying to switch up the characters. Though. It could be Lewis. It could be uh, hey. Clark Kent and Lewis. Yeah. It but, could. Uh, hey, hey boy, you better I'm stop before they pick that up. I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> Because no, they already did up. some, with, with, it was uh, some character and it wasn't right. Yeah. I think it was like Batman or something. You can't I mean, do that. Not no, Batman. No, just, today is like, you know, the sports scene. And not to dial too much into the community. The sports but scene? The sports scene, we got, you know, uh, hmm. a gentleman that transferred over to swimming. Oh, trash. Um, oh, you know, trash. Look, look, oh. We know how that is. We know you're cheating. But like, how you feel about them? 
you know, going from if they start in the NBA, they can go to WNBA. Trash. I mean, I don't trash, think bro, I don't think trash. any of that makes sense. It, it here, might happen though. No, here's the thing. Here's, here's it the just thing. don't make sense. This yeah. is what I say about no. this is what I say about anything in life. It's just simple. Anything in life, bro. Everything is permissible. Do whatever you want, but not everything is beneficial. And then two. As long as you can live however you want to live, as long as when you die and you get to them gates, you stand on the way you live. Mm -hmm. So that means if you was the biggest stepper while you was here, <laughs> don't don't, turn don't get to the gates and want to be like God. But I'm like, you know, I wouldn't even want, like I ain't want to. No, you can't do that. No, nah. the way you live, be willing to stand on that. That's it. So whatever your choices are, you can do whatever you want. And I think it's weird when we care too much about how other people live. It's like, bro, that ain't got nothing to do with you and yours. Really you just don't. make sure you and yours are good. The, exactly. the thing, the thing that I think anytime I care is more so of the the imagery and the uh, manipulation of the mind. That's what and more treated. like yeah. uh, more kids. of the programming. Yeah, when it comes to kids bro. and things yeah. of that nature, because we can bypass it because we already a certain place and be like, okay, they ain't got nothing to do with me you know if that's what you do i don't look at you no differently uh that's that's cool like bro by all means do you but like when it comes to programming and putting it in cartoons and then having certain commercials and, and slightly just infiltrating these these but that's very, why you gotta raise like, your like, kids though bro not giving them a chance but i got it's not giving them a chance they don't even know what's happening to them yeah. man even if they don't start this way they could be this but way that's why you gotta raise of, your babies bro I, having two i got a teenager a 13 year old mm -hmm. It's and a like, scary time sometimes. 13, like 13, I got a teenager. I was, you know, you, you, you watch it be you cousin and all that stuff, 13. Like, you yeah, so, up on a lot of knowledge. That so it's, it's middle school, right? So I'm, I am remember middle school being, oh, this is a pivotal moment. So I'm grabbing him. I got him here with me. Mm -hmm. Not on no I'm the, I, Iron Fist, yeah. but, you know, by the grace yeah, of God, yeah. we have such a great connection with our son. So he tell, he'll come, something happened at school, he coming right home and he telling us, all about it. Like, man, you ain't gonna believe this, man. Like, you know, and so knowing that, it's like, okay. For one, I feel like sometimes the previous generation, we did, they, they didn't do a good job at opening that space. Opening that space. Mm -hmm. And then two, they weren't truthful. In fact. Be like, cause you gonna find, you get out in the world, you gonna find out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You gonna figure it, you gonna find out. So it's like, you have to be honest with, hey son, this is what it is. You got two choices. Here's what it is, here's what it is. One of them is gonna be beneficial, one of them not. What are your principles? You know, that's what we got. We got uh, this painting. My wife had this made for Father's Day for me. It's a painting with the four principles of what home team is built on. Faith, family, hustle, help, right? These are our four principles. If, it, if it's anything outside of these principles, then it ain't for you. Any, whatever's inside of these, go for it. You got the freedom to do that. But anything outside of that, it ain't for you. And it's interesting because, like, I have conversations about this all the time. People be wanting to be free and be be very free these days. And they don't understand that you need to be free within guidelines. Yeah. There's a reason yeah. that there's guidelines and boundaries yeah. there for you to be free in because that's when you can have ultimate freedom because you know, don't go over there. Yeah. Like, but if you want to be just so free where you can go over here and over there and people getting into very like spiritual aspects, they can go into these places and get into trenches and things that they don't even realize until it's too late and you're in there because you went too far left. And, and that's happening. That the hard way. We're just like the way, the way I chose. I had chose to live my life. Mm -hmm. um, the way, like the decisions I was making as a man is just like, yo, those decisions are literally like destroying your family. Mm -hmm. Like you need guidelines. You need principles. You don't have mm -hmm. principles. Like my dad was in my life, but he didn't pass down a set of principles. Mm -hmm. So I had to figure out, okay, what are my principles? I'm 28 at this time. <laughs> what are my principles? Yeah. Like what do I live my life by? Mm -hmm. And you know, I had to sit, figure it out, pray. Like fuck that. What? What? Like what am I supposed to live my life by? And it's like, okay, boom, 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 boom. Faith, family, hustle, help. All right, cool. If it's outside of that, it ain't for you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's like from there. It's like I, my life is so much better. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Just in the like joy aspect. Like, bro, I ain't waking up like and not feeling the weight of like everything going on in the world. Absolutely, I'm human. But it's like, bro, I wake up and I'm like, man, like this could be so much worse because it has been worse. Mm -hmm. Cause you wake up just like with no cause and you just wake up just 
handling everything that's coming towards you, mm -hmm. you got to have kind of like a pattern or like kind of like, you know, something. Uh, what is it? Discipline. Discipline. Yeah. Even, even like on some like, you know, you wake up. Like, what what are three things you grateful for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. when you wake up, you just go ahead and hit three things real quick. What you grateful for? Oh man, I'm actually grateful for this. You realize you have things to be grateful for. You know, mm -hmm. and these and today, man, everybody's waking up and trying to be super disciplined, like and everybody's on their five five AM and then do this and then do this and make sure you're doing your routine every day, which is great. And I'm with that. I don't subscribe all the way, but I think it's good to have some of that. Yeah, but mm -hmm. I want people to remember like the human aspect and some days you're gonna you're gonna be able to be here. Here. Some days you're gonna be here. Some days you'll be in between. Like you gonna fluctuate and flow. You need to make sure you are actually being a human and not being a, an android, yeah. not being a robot yeah. to build the life you think you need. Because it's people that made it to the top that just live their life. Like I don't get up every day at 5 a.m., but I still have a very successful and productive day. I can literally get up sometime at 11 and do off. and do more <laughs> kind of joking, than yeah. everybody. <laughs> Everybody else did within their time, no, within yes. those couple hours. It's like already had a free schedule. It's free schedule, or I really just be in the flow with the Most High and let Him do what He do. And I be I like, what's on the schedule? I honestly, like, even honestly, I didn't know I was gonna be here. Yeah. But we in here being productive and having this conversation right now. I appreciate y'all for coming on time. I deal with a lot of entertainers. It's like you kind of give them an hour. Oh, hey, no, yeah. You know, we not getting that. Okay. Okay. You know nah. what I mean? No, I got, like, I got fans. She uh, like, what time we got to be yeah, where? Yeah, I was yeah. like an army. Y'all came this bad boy at verse park. Ten, <laughs> ten minutes before, I was like, bad. Okay. Yeah, we, just, we ain't got time to be uh, nah, playing man. around. I know, you know especially with this game of life, man. I've been like... I feel like going through this life, man, what's the most difficult situation you like had to dig yourself out of? Mm -hmm. Bro, I was like, my marriage, bro. That's like, <laughs> I don't think people understand because we don't value marriage the same way, mm -hmm. right? Um, bro, that was the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life. You talk about like, bro, we married for, we got married when I was 20, right? She was 22, just turned 22. So we got married young. We married for six years. We going through it, going through it. We both come from broken homes. So we don't know what we do. We ain't got the tools or nothing. We just figuring out on the fly, listening to people. Like, like we don't know what we doing. Then we get divorced. And bruh, like, I'm not able to take accountability. Well, she did, had me feeling like this. I did this, cause, not taking accountability. And then one day, I was like, yo, this is really all your fault. You made these decisions and it caused this because as a man, you're supposed to be the head of your household, right? As you go, your family will go. So if you healthy, your family got a better chance of being healthy. Um, and I was like, yo, man, it's, it's really on me. And, you know, I was listening to uh, Dr. Eric Thomas, the motivational speaker. He really changed my life because he was the first black man I ever heard or saw who was like successful, who loved God, and he had money, and a great marriage. It was like, yo, I've never seen that combination before. And so I was just digging in, listening to him, and it was just one thing he talked about, how he had to go back and fix his relationship with his mom in order to be able to like have a successful marriage with his wife because the way their interaction was was affecting that and i just heard a faint whisper i never forget it said uh <laughs> you need to go back and fix your marriage like just that faint whisper in the back of my mind and i spoke audibly it was like absolutely not right that's literally what i said out loud by myself like, absolutely not it was just on me and so we we started working on it um you know she was gracious enough to like forgive me and like welcome me back with open arms and it was hard bro like you talking about you dealing with everything in your life that you've been through that you've seen with your parents she's been like it was hard bro you got to be extra vulnerable you got to tell the, the nastiest deepest darkest stuff you don't want like you got to be that vulnerable and it was hard bro and it was scary and you know what i'm saying earning my son's trust back like i remember there was one time it was late, we were kicking it. This is before we got back married. And uh, 
I, you know, I, it was super late, so I was like, I'm not gonna drive home. I just stayed the night on the couch. And uh, I remember it was early in the morning, he comes peeking out. He looks just to see if I was still there, bro. And then, I'm talking about, it tore me up. I, I'm emotional, so I, I ain't trying to cry. So but. you was just like, you, you was kind of waking up, you saw it? Yeah, I just happened to see, I'm a light sleep, so I saw him like peek out. He just looked out just to see if I was still there. And it was like, man. And then I really started realizing like, just how deep the damage had been done. And it was like, man, you gotta work twice as hard. And it was, it was hard, bro. That was absolutely the most difficult thing I've ever had to do in my life. But it's the most rewarding though. Mm. You know what I'm it's saying? It's good to be around your family. Bro. You already, you're the king of your family, you know? Boom, you got your queen. Once you align everything, you know? That now everything else can work. Yeah, yeah. Like now say, everything else can work. Him doing that really sparked even home team and everything else That's with true. every getting that in order otherwise you would have still been probably going to flashy boys rather something like that going this way rather than going this way you know what i mean and it would have been different yep. and yeah i feel like for myself even when i was touching on the spiritual aspect right and in, in this realm it's so open right now everything is open and accessible and everything is minimized when it comes to how either damaging or uplifting it could be so it's it's easy to go either way and i got to go through a deep time of traveling that realm from all the way on the left side to all the way on the right then finding the, the balance in the middle that was my journey i think that was one of the hardest things is to navigate that realm and and find truly how to do my purpose and how to connect with other human beings in order to be the bridge and be the light that i'm here to be um to to release a lot of pain and resentment for individuals that came along the way and just took advantage or, or messed stuff up and and even to forgive myself for allowing those type of things to occur um those were some of my hardest journeys to be honest like Forgiving yourself. Forgiving yeah, myself. Yeah, yeah. Forgiving yourself, and then at the same time, sometimes you gotta tell people you got it. Yeah, mm -hmm. bro. Nah, yeah. That's facts. the hardest. A thousand Those two percent. Those things are really hard to do, and that's, bro. That's just remaining in a higher space, you yeah. know, a higher place of just like dwelling in that temple and understanding. Because I always like to explain things from different points of view when things are going on. I know I have my human aspect right which even is bodily your body will feel something and make you uh, have emotions then i have my my spiritual aspect and my soul and then i have just a higher consciousness from being connected to source and a lot of times i never neglect the emotional aspect of of my human side but i always like to remain in a higher place meaning i give myself that time if it's something really really uh like impactful you get like 24 hours or so you know what i'm saying i don't it ain't strict but like most of the time that 24 hour time frame to to let that energy ooze out and be released and then you move forward because you have a higher understanding of what's really going on mm -hmm. you know that things are going to be transitioning you know that things are going to be coming and going you know all of these things and, and you're so intelligent you can't act like you don't know yeah, exactly. once you put them lenses on them lenses is on even if you go like this you like damn so, you know, i'm seeing so, what i'm thinking is like you're scanning the room mm -hmm. boom, boom, boom. you could kind of feel how somebody energy is over there mm -hmm. you, kinda, you can kind of get a sense of how it's going down mm -hmm. have you ever had like a moment where you had to trust your gut feeling and then you went with it uh, every day it turned out Good. Yeah. Well, so for for me, I'm not. My wife is my uh my scanner. Uh, <laughs> she call it. She get it right every time, bro. And so uh, that's why I always bring her everywhere with me. Yeah. You know. And so uh, yeah, she's my scanner. Cause I'm. I love people, bro. Like I love, like I love to have like relationships with people, and I I, I just feel like my job as a human is to like help people become the best versions of themselves right mm -hmm. and that only works if i'm becoming the best version of myself and i'm working on me but i feel like and so you know i i, I long for like deep relationships with people like i don't just you know want to meet people just to like all right bro i don't i only do the small talk i'd rather just not talk to you if we're just gonna do the fake <laughs> yeah, stuff facts. but like if we do become in relationship like friends or whatever like i'm tapping in with you. hey how you doing you know and so that's my thing so i'm a little bit more open uh, in that way 
Uh, so I gotta, you know, I gotta have her. When well, like, you told me, I'm just like, bro, it's all good. Cause like, I had to do interviews with my little nephews. Be yeah, absolutely. Here. I'm having to, you know, take them to practice. I come back and they know I'm 10 minutes late. Like, yeah. I love when people communicate. I mm -hmm. like that y'all are on point and, you know, just, just very, very technical with everything. Yeah. You know, Try to be. going forward, what are some of the projects y'all trying to dive into? Mm -hmm. So, so right now, like I said, we in this home team takeover. Um, we got one more artist about to roll out. So I dropped my single, uh, Double Back. RJ dropped his, Connected. Mm -hmm. um, another artist on the label by the name of 2 3 Reed from Diamond Hill uh, uh, in Fort Worth. He dropped his song called Go. And then next up, we got our artist, Oso James, about to drop uh, his single called so Sincere. I'm ask you about that. I think you did a show with him out in Dallas. Um, uh, was it on at Elm Street? Deep Who? Elm? Oh yeah, we did a yeah 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 yeah. So we did we did the Deep Elm Art Fest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah yeah yeah. That was uh. But that was you know. I, this will be we have a show on July 9th at the Ruins. Um, <laughs> it'll be like a home team takeover there. So make sure Thanks. we want to personally invite y'all out too. Make sure y'all there. Um, cause it's gonna be a moment. Thanks. And so uh, you know, this will be the first time I like you know actually like share the stage with you know my brothers i usually don't bring people on stage with me not 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 on no like arrogant stuff but because it's like i'm putting a show together you know what, what i'm saying feeling like though i know y'all gotta be nervous bro that's a different kind of nervous you know what i mean mm, that's just what i i've been on stage my whole life so it's <laughs> i feel like um i don't know it's interesting if you think outside of your life in the moment it can get nervous but when you just really taking it step by step and you just keep walking it's like if you uh found a hundred dollar bills right mm -hmm. a trail of a hundred dollar bills and you just kept walking and picking them up and then you ended up in you just stay so focused on that you ended up in the room on the stage mm -hmm. in front of everybody you're like oh shit Boom. when did i when did i get here like okay well i'm here now so go ahead and cue the joint that we was talking like it's more so like that for me um it's just sticking to um what's going on and not overthinking it because you obviously if you are on this path you are supposed to be here to do this so you're obviously not going to fail like the most high is not going to embarrass you or himself when you're doing it for the right reasons so even if you didn't feel prepared you will be in the moment and you just gotta really release and trust that so um that's what i keep in mind as i'm doing everything like i that's like we think too hard about being in here talking to you now i'm like oh man am i saying am i saying the right thing when i like not like literally just show up and talk you are already ready for those type of things you already have everything you you need you're equipped for these moments and that's what helps like not really be nervous that's what helps being like no nah, i'm really made for this this is what i'm supposed to do because even now like sometimes i do think and be like man what i'm gonna do when i get to this show this is gonna be interesting like we a month out I ain't really did too much to just prepare necessarily besides I guess when you look at it I guess so we did so we did a few shows and stuff um, just playing around like going to open mic or going and doing this and doing that so uh, had some fashion shows having music going there when you start looking and paying attention like, I guess I have been getting prepared in an interesting way but I haven't really intentionally be like oh i need to rehearse and do this i have not i have not done that yet right um so sometimes i be like man am i ready but then i be like shit every time we step out something else take over so it's gonna be fine like you know to answer your question that's when you figure out like nah, you really kind of like whether you think so or not you really made and suited to be this individual for this time within this craft so it seems like you're pretty calm with it man it's like man, yeah easy. you know yeah. what do y'all do in y'all's free time just to kick it and relax huh uh, <laughs> yeah you with the fam I'm with these babies yeah uh that's what i do yeah me uh shoot i mean i really just be vibing like just just chilling uh probably cook some uh eat on that you know um man i just be moving with the energy i might go in there and record a, a track 
and then get up and now I gotta run over here to this event, show some love or be a part or help produce it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Might need to go help my son mentor with some stuff and, and sell some clothes, got a collection that need to come out. Mm -hmm. Like just kind of my free time is my creative time. Like it's that's my life. I that's I I stopped trying to separate my life into these categories and understood that all of these categories is me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like literally can get up and go do this and then get up and go do that. And that's just who I am. I feel like everybody, everybody today try to make everything, like structure is good, but when you try to do too much, it gets, it's, the, it's counterproductive. It's a, uh, I feel like it's too super designer now. So yeah. I see y'all with the retros and I, I get excited when I see people with like just threes and military fours and yeah. I'm like, that, you know Hello. what I mean? And <laughs> just all new releases and Facts. You know, oh, no. and no. I'm a yeah. hooper, so yeah. I, it's always gonna be Jordan. Where do y'all get y'all style from, man? Like, where, who was some of the mm. people influenced? Like, if you was to get like five people, like mm. I'll say Martin Payne, you know, Jamie Foxx, I might say, Shoot, I seen. Are you know, talking about art, music wise, just, or, just fact, or just like, like life? Who you looked up to, you know? So I got, yeah, I got you. Uh, my number one mm. is always gonna be Mike mm. Jackson, not Jordan. No, Jackson it's hard. Michael Jackson. Yes. He's always gonna be my number one. Um, Kobe. Um, Jay Z. Lenny Kravitz. And uh, Miles Davis, the father of cool. Hmm. Yeah, that's mine. Gee, that's he mine. thought about that. He been knowing that for a minute. For a while, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you gotta know, you study. You, you know me, bro. Yeah. I'm, a, no, I'm he, a student. He studies and he's a student. Mm -hmm. And like, in the most weirdest way, I'm like not. Mm -mm. Like, I'm very just like, I'm just not, bro. So this question always is something that I feel like- I, Just say me. I, yeah. yeah, just say me or what? <laughs> no, 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 say like me. <laughs> <laughs> they say you want to be like me. <laughs> nah, like, uh, I feel like I normally start with something yeah. and I just keep diving into whatever I started and finding more intricate ways to express that. Yo, you if I had to say who I would think your inspiration would be, uh -huh. like just your or I would say like Bruce Lee, bro. Damn. That makes sense though. Just being you, real. Cause you That makes sense. You're though. you're very like, you know, be like complex with, with, with the wordplay and that might be coming from your rapping style. Mm -hmm. the, and then at the same time, he he is a student. I mm -hmm. understand that. So y'all bounce off of each other because it's complete opposite. No facts. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so, fact, it, it definitely brings up cause he be like, hey, you gotta study the way that these people cause because you already nice, but if you go in and you see what they was doing, I'll be like, I'll be like, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then I'll be like, I'm going to see about that. And, and you know, it's on my mind. It. Don't see it back. You know, it don't be on his mind. It's it do be on my mind. You're full of... <laughs> like, I don't just too. throw it away, bro. You throw that shit away. I don't. <laughs> but you got to respect that, though, because it's like, I was serious. He not... No he do, but, but you, know, you know what make it easy, though, is like, I'm able to... And this is everybody in the squad. Like, I'm able to challenge all of us right? right because they can challenge me and i also they know like the standard i hold myself to and so it's like all right it's kind of hard to like be like well you do it but they're like yeah well i already know jay probably like he in the lab studying he doing whatever he like holding himself to he rewriting right he doing whatever he got to do and so you know when i do throw out a challenge or whatever like they all they always accept, that, accept sure. it and whether it's like easy to, and it's vice versa, whether it's easy to hear or it's not, it's like, all right, let me let me see what's up. If it worked, it worked. If it don't, it don't. At least we tried though, mm -hmm. you know? And so that's the, that's kind of the energy behind like, like home team It's just like, yo, we gonna do whatever we gotta do to get where we trying to go. So I got a, I got a few names though. No. So, Me? so growing up, Joseph. definitely, which is which is interesting because you said <laughs> the same name first. Mike was obviously like, I mean, honestly, just to see the way that he would maneuver, 
like the moves that he was doing the different it's just something that's really untouchable it's bro perfection, like bro. the perfection yeah Pity like what can you he loved his player man <laughs> like, yeah. he did whatever mm -hmm. whatever he did was play mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and, and even meeting somebody that's close to him that when i talk with them it feel like i'm talking to him because they just so similar like you know blanket like oh. bro <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that his name? That's oh, not wait, his wait, name, wait, 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 bro. That's what Mike introduced him as. No, I'm no, I'm talking B Howard. Brand, Brandon Howard. Mom know who, who, who. It's, it's his son. All right, so it's his son. So <laughs> no, it's his son. It's Mike. Nah, okay. So right. so we'll talk about it another time. <laughs> Um, so you got it's like, he's talking about blanket. That's his in that him? No disrespect, B. That's yeah. we Bro, apologize. I'm not disrespecting. I'm I love That's Michael. I love all of them. Man, if your if your son become like a quarterback or call cornerback blanket is good cover. That, oh man. Oh man, y'all doing him daddy. No, so, I'm dead serious, bro. So look, <laughs> say, Nip Nipsey Hustle. Okay. I like Nip. Yeah. Nip was Nip was hard just because of what he stood on and uh represented and he was a maneuver within the tech realm um, and being innovative and, and really trying to do something not trying but really doing something for his people like uh, first and foremost which was beautiful you know what I mean um, I have to say Tupac just because he was a uh, a big change within his time at 25 like mm -hmm. that's kind of crazy on just like the impact that he made at such a young, young age like he oh, did all, that. all of that like within a small amount of six time years. for real for real and i'm like so i gotta respect that and growing up i used to be told like that we we look similar and stuff so i, I would always i did kind of pay attention to him and one of the things which is kind of weird about me right is Normally, when I'm being told that I'm familiar to somebody, I actually don't look at the ways that we're familiar. I look at the things that they did that I don't want to do. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, it teaches me, I get to learn more like that than looking at what they did successfully. Interesting enough, because I feel like the most high gonna guide me when it comes to that. But I want to see, all right, like him dealing with um like certain women and things of that nature putting him in, and dealing with uh certain individuals that he shouldn't have been dealing with in in uh um thugging in a sense like and what that route can really you get you because you didn't have to do that you had enough talent not to do that but you know like they said the world gonna give you everything to destroy yourself right mm -hmm. so i learned that from looking at pop like that's what the world gave him everything to kill and, and drown himself because they couldn't do nothing with him mm -hmm. and in the same situation like all right bet i know that so these this right here my priorities change based off of that you know what i mean um and like even with nip like he was in deep so deep but he was still making his way out but when you are in there to a certain degree it's, it's not really escaping right um so it's like just paying attention to those things within those individuals and plus their greatness but really dialing in on that um let me see somebody that that i just cannot ever really shake because i'm from the south i have braids and I use tune when I'm making music and things of that nature, <laughs> which, it, and that'll be Travis, right? Scott, Travis yeah. Scott. I can never, I will never be able to shake that. And for the longest, I literally did not pay attention because I didn't like how much of a like we were. And it, when it came to the outside, at least. Um, but like, man, he did a lot of things that I want to do, too. So, as far as events. like events, when it comes to being in the tech room, already doing the the Fortnite show, mm -hmm. um, partnering with Nike and yeah, Jordan, like me, man. doing I ain't for real, man. Uh, man. Like, man. No, I mean, you play Fortnite. I play Fortnite. I play Mortal Kombat. Man, I'm gonna tap in with I never Fortnite. played My Fortnite. A, a beast Tekken. I never Fortnite. played Fortnite, but Fortnite. but Tekken and um and Mortal Kombat MK, we can get on that for yeah, sure. Yeah. But like just being in that you realm, got a game system. I do. I just um. never play it. <laughs> <laughs> Type shit. But like um yeah, like he he stepped in that realm and did a lot of cool stuff that I would like to do. Mm -hmm. So I have to at least pay attention and see like I. 
since he did a lot of stuff I want to do, how can I do that on another level? Mm -hmm. He partnered with McDonald's. I don't even eat McDonald's. So I could partner with somebody else. <laughs> but like, that's still cool and I can pay attention to it and say congratulations because a little black boy on McDonald's is still hard around the world to have your own. The stuff he was doing was very monumental. Mm -hmm. So I have to pay attention to that and congratulate him as another black man. You know what I mean? Uh, so that's hard. And I appreciate him for opening up the door, which leads to the next you could have had the McPlant meal though. Uh, yeah, yeah, with the plant based with joint. The plant -based. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. We're gonna have something like that and yeah. be innovative. Um, and then, uh, like I said, that opened the next door for um, Kanye. I have to respect Kanye and what he's done to open the door for people like myself. Like they don't, they didn't want us to necessarily be in that realm with fashion and doing fashion and music and like he started breaking barriers and didn't care to be called crazy or be cut, care to be called this this or that and he spoke his mind too about whatever he really broke those barriers and was just like i'm gonna be that he take a lot of scrutiny for it and everything else but that's his his way to bury and he and he he carry it well so um yeah like man it's really a plethora of people that i respect that don't mean I just dial in on everything they doing, but you Kendrick me, Lamar, you left me out the Big list. Sean, <laughs> you, st you still ain't put me in the list, Brody. <laughs> <laughs> um, I but like, even a lot of people who are like visionaries. Facts. You know what I mean? These are people that's you know. I've been meaning to ask y'all, where do y'all see yourselves five years or ten years from now in this game? No idea. You know, you you can't like All right, five years from now. I, can't, I don't even know where I'm going to be a year from now because I'm really moving at God's speed for real. Like, I'm really moving it. Yeah, this really is question. like, yeah, like I can't, a lot of people start answering that question and I'm like, but I can't even answer that because no, no, I, really. I, I might be belittling what the Most High even had for me for real. Like, because mm -hmm. he, he be moving in a month, he'll do something that take a year to do. Yeah. For I, real. So I, I, I'll say as a, uh, as a, as an entity, as home team, I would say in five years, I would hope that we are an established like entity, not just in the in the metroplex in the state, but in the country as like a hub. This is a place um, where artists can come and they have a opportunity to express themselves the way they want to express themselves but also they get to learn things as well. A place where people care about you and they care about your art and they care about your mission, your assignment, whatever you're trying to do. And so that's what I want home team to be. I want it to be a launch pad to push people, a lot like Empire, how the way Empire is set up, like more, more of like a distribution space where you mm -hmm. can come and learn and build and get support. And that's what that's that's really what I want home team records to be. And so, you know, that's my goal is like getting these, you know, four artists established, including myself. So, um, where mm -hmm. they wanna go musically and uh, you know, just support them in, in whatever way they wanna, you know, create mm -hmm. and express themselves. I mean something gonna bust open. So that's like no it's certain things that's like for sure gonna happen. Can I speak on them in t in this like totality? Probably not, because I never want to disrespect, like I said, the, the work of the Most High, but I know fashion, music, tech, and all the different projects and tabs that are open when they come to that stuff going to be flourishing, especially five years from now. My God. Like, <laughs> they're talking about putting our souls and all that in the metaverse. No, leave me like, out. Bro, oh, leave yeah. me be, out, bro. Leave me out of that. Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. think I want to be. How See, do you feel about that? I mean, like, I'm not going to be left out. Of course, I'm not doing that, but I'm going to be in that realm maneuvering in order to, like, somebody got to be in there. Otherwise, they can, they're going to be doing exactly what they want to do. Somebody has to be in that, in that room when these conversations are being had to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And I feel like um, I can't just completely step out without having an ear or two within that realm of knowing what, what it is. So that's kind of where I'm at with it. Like, um, that's why, like I was saying earlier, when it came to the NFTs and stuff like that, that's that's the beginning of where, where the metaverse and things like that is gonna go with Oculus and things of that nature. If I'm just completely out, I won't know how to maneuver or help other people maneuver mm -hmm. that wanna go in there to make a change. It's just like, I guess, you know, 
break it down with the voting and stuff like that. At one point, like, I forget about voting completely. But at the same time, all right, wait, it's a tier system. It might be flawed and we can't do everything, but at least when it comes to local voting, if we do local voting and actually do something, we can help and actually start spreading and getting in there to make more of a change that's better than doing nothing. You know, so it's like the same aspect of like, definitely not putting my soul into, like I I let like the billionaires and stuff that put their soul in there and just for it, it to, to watch their vessel walk off and do stuff with their face on it and then now they sitting in here upset because they like, dang, I got tricked. And then now it's, it's like, I'm watching myself do everything that is. the gates, you got to stand Everybody talk about that. Everybody talk about, oh, who they going to slide on, who does that. But I'm like, bro, what y'all scared of police for? And why y'all scared of certain stuff like this? And when, when this is over with, you know who you're going to have to deal with? Nah, stand bro. on it. You got to stand yeah, on it. You got to stand, stand on it. Yeah. So, I mean, All that stepping. You know, which is like, hey, man. Do whatever you want. Yeah. As long as you can stand on it when you get to the gates, bro. Mm -hmm. That's what I, you know, that's my, yeah. that's my philosophy. No, and I'm here to ask y'all, man, where do y'all's, like, you know, socials and where can the people find you? Because, mm -hmm. like, you know, I want to stamp this here and mm -hmm. you know, broadcast it, man. Like, like where, where can people find you? Twitter, yeah. Instagram? Yeah, so you can follow me on, uh, on IG at the vibrant, T H A underscore vibrant. Um, also, you know, visit the Home Team Records website, hometeamrecords.com. Um, you're gonna have everything is there. You know, visit the Home Team Records YouTube channel for all the visuals, all that stuff. And make sure you get your tickets for July 9th. Yeah. The Home Team is gonna be live at the Ruins Deep Ellen. It's gonna be a movie. What so, time they need to be there, man? Uh, doors open at 10. Okay. So be there at 10, get your tickets now. Get them down before they sell out, because it's going to sell out. Um, yeah, you can find me Instagram mainly, uh, which is Ronald K. Jones. Very simple, straightforward. Uh, I do have a Twitter. I'm on there for documentation. Normally, I drop a nugget or something. That's for myself to look back on. But you can find me on there, too. It's Ronald K. Jones as well. Uh, I think the second. Um, other than that, yeah, just, just, just get with me on that. My clothing brand, rkjclothing.com. Uh, home team, like he said, please plug that in. So click on that as well. And we just gonna have a good time, man. Um, yeah. Yes, and find us, find us at events. Mm -hmm. Come speak, come say something. Mm -hmm. Find me like that. That's that's really like be impactful. Let's make a, a moment or something that I can actually remember you. Cause in today's time, like people are just here. In there, and that's how I felt when I first met you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, some they, people stick, some people right? don't. What's the main thing? I thought thing? you wasn't gonna stick. I ain't gonna lie, but you've been here <laughs> three years later. You still. <laughs> See, like, you'll get connections like this, you know what I mean? Nah, facts. Yeah, but make sure it's organic. You know, you don't have to walk up and be a or, uh, robot Man. or a droid, like you were saying. Put it in the oven. Yeah. Don't put it in the microwave. <laughs> put it in the oven, man. Sheesh. Mama said, thaw it out, thaw out that chicken before I get there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. People don't like that, that slow cooked no more because everything is just so uh, instantaneous. Mm -hmm. But, like, I feel like, yeah, put it in the oven. Mm -hmm. I appreciate y'all, man, for yeah, coming through the chopping game with me, man. Uh, Not for real. Man, I look forward to everything y'all got going in the future. And, Likewise. You know, Likewise. We gotta run this back again, man. I'm Definitely. telling you, when we do, uh, we got, you know, as an individual album start rolling out. Facts. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna send them through. They gotta come see you. Yeah, facts.